All right, we're talking with Dennis Maniloff. D-Man, it's, it's early on in, in the training camp with the Browns and that, but what's your take so far, your thoughts on what's going on in Berea? As long as it's the summer, Mike, I'm optimistic about the Browns. <laughs> I'm always optimistic about the Browns before any games are played. But honestly, Mike, if you want to be as objective as possible about this group, you have to like what you see in terms of the potential mm -hmm. for a legitimate rebuild. Because we always talk about how oh, the Browns are rebuilding, but you can see that there aren't really the great athletes or the potential athletes, the, the high football IQs. In this case, with this group, you can see the athleticism. I mean, when you watch the tape, when you, uh, when you listen to the interviews, when you read, uh, it sounds like there's a group in Berea that can play the game. Right. And you also have two dynamic coaches and Hugh Jackson, the head coach, and basically the OC, and then Greg Williams, the DC. Uh, we haven't seen that in a long time uh, in, in Cleveland. So I like the possibilities for this group. Uh, when I look at the defense and I see you know a guy like Miles Garrett on the other side, Emmanuel Agba, uh, when I see a Jamie Collins who elected to stay here, uh, albeit for a lot of money, but mm -hmm. he stayed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you look at the offense, the rebuild offensive line, uh, you know, you see some skill position guys that are emerging. So I'm optimistic about this team in general, but specifically because they seem to have so many young, athletic, high football IQ guys. I'm not guaranteeing they win overnight, but at least it's going to be something worth, worth watching. Yeah. Is Garrett probably the most athletic, <laughs> best first round looking athlete in this town in a he, long, long time? I mean, with the yeah. Browns? He, he wins the underwear Olympics, there's he's, no question yeah, about yeah. it. I mean, he, he's an absolute physical monster. Um, you, you hope he stays healthy, he right. can overcome the foot issues that plagued him uh, at AM and then bothered him a little bit in the minis uh, with Cleveland. But he certainly looks the part. Um, you know, he and Agba, to me, I mean, I, when I dream as a cat, as, as somebody who would be a Browns fan thinking ahead, like, okay, what would I want to see? I look at those bookends, Agba and Garrett, and I say, that could be fun to watch for yeah. years to come, especially under a dynamic, uh, brainiac, uh, hard-nosed, eat nails for breakfast defensive coordinator like Greg Williams. Okay. Got some quick thoughts on the quarterback situation? Well, I mean, it's obviously interesting. And, and the critic to my, or the counter to my optimism would be, well, you can talk all you want about potential here, potential there, but if there's no quarterback, where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere. I get that. And right now, this quarterback room, there's nobody that's jumped off the page mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, I think, predominantly about Kessler, uh, Osweiler, and uh, Kaiser. But I really like what I've seen from Deshaun Kaiser in snippets. All right. He, he again looks the part. Uh, he's got a big arm. He's got the frame that you want in this division. Uh, in, in other words, he's a guy who you think can withstand some hits because that's been one of the problems right. for Browns quarterbacks right. is they get hit and they crumple because they don't have the big enough frame, to, like the Ross, Roethlisberger type frame to have guys bounce off. But Kaiser seems to be a guy who really wants it, who studies, who cares. Uh, who's there after practice, so he, he checks almost all the boxes. Now, there's going to be a growth period there, but I think he's your guy going forward. The question is, when will it be?